Hello and welcome to Hyperspace Hangout, a podcast by Star Wars fans for Star Wars fans. I am Matt Starwin. And I am Ezra Skyhopper. Welcome aboard the Outcast. This is the place for all Star Wars fans where we discuss your thoughts and theories about a galaxy far, far away. Matt, I don't, here, here's, here's, here's what I'm going to say. All right. <laughs> I'm going to say it like this. I, 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 I grew up watching Star Wars. Yes. Okay, I, I grew up watching it. Um, it's something that I used to dream about. It's um, on my Christmas list. Every year, I ask for Star Wars toys. Um, on you a rainy do. day. I still do. Yeah. Honestly, I'm going to ask for uh, some toys here in a second. So, so, you know, stay tuned for that. But it's just... <laughs> oh, man. I From, like, the earliest... Like, so early in my life, I used to get, like, even my other cousins, like, would, would make fun of me for it. They didn't get it. They didn't, they didn't understand it, you know? Why did I like these characters so much? Why, why, why did I watch these movies over and over? How's come every time when they came over uh, and it was raining and we couldn't go outside, I said, hey, let's, let's put in Return of the Jedi. And I would put it in and we would watch it. And they hated it, but I loved it. And then eventually, I grew up. And I found a friend who also likes Star Wars, yes. you know, <laughs> and it's like, and, and who also grew up with it and, and was influenced by it. And I, I, and I just, I love it. I love to hear those guys who were there <laughs> yeah. and, in 1977, like those guys that, that were that they were sitting there and they said, I couldn't believe it. I just, I, you, 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 it's, it's hard to explain what it was like and what it did. And you can still get that. I, I think, I think the thing is, is that they're at an age and, and you're, you're at that, that point where you are the adult in the room. You can talk about Star Wars because you were there. These kids that are watching it now, they will one day be in that position, right? They were there. Like, that's us with, with like uh, episode one. Right. The hype when it was coming out, you know, I was already locked in and, 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 and ready to go beforehand reading the books and everything. But then that was my star. It was something I could really, really enjoy. And I don't know, man. It's just, I, I just wanted to let everyone know that sometimes I walk around my apartment and I stop and I look at my, my shelves full of star Wars. <sighs> action figures toys books movies and i look at this collection i recently moved uh stuff out of my storage unit and i moved it um into the barn and i moved some stuff over here and i forgot how much stuff i have <laughs> it's actually freaking insane dude so much star wars stuff and uh we're going to talk about more of it today there's a lot lot to talk about but this is the thing in, in, in hyperspace hangout to me has always just been about talking about those memories, talking about what you like about Star Wars, what you're into, what got you into it, what's dry, what keeps you in it, what do you want to continue to talk about? And there's always something. I just I I love this fandom. I love everything about it. I love the force and it just fires me up. So so this morning, um I had I I've, I've been reading a lot of our other um Fantasy series, Game of Thrones, Wheel of Time, some other things like that, trying to get caught up. A lot of big literature-based podcast. But this morning, I set off for, for work, and I started listening to Thrawn, uh, Thrawn, Thrawn Treason. And I'm fired up, man. I am absolutely fired up. And it made me, it made me, it like took me back to when, you know, um, Thrawn came back into Rebels and they started writing Thrawn books. Timothy Zahn is back. And it took me all the way back to when I was reading the Thrawn trilogy. And I just, in, in, in the 90s, you know, reading that and just getting super into it and being so, I, I just, I, I, I love it. So if you're out there and you've got a youngster, like I, I all the time am thinking like, I know Rachel, I mean, you don't want like four, again, I, I watch it, Star Wars is around, like see, no one was watching Star Wars at my house when I dug through right. and I found the VHS and I put it in. And, and no one understood what was going. That was the force. I just want to make this really clear, okay? 
I was led to the Empire Strikes Back. I don't know what it was. Something led me there. No one said, hey, sit down and watch this. Okay? I was guided. It was, it was like Ezra Bridger. It was like Luke and those other individuals who... It was like Qui-Gon finding Anakin. It was the will of the Force. God! Oh, sorry, man. I'm just so, I'm just so, like, I don't know, like, re reading, reading Thrawn this morning and just thinking about all those memories and thinking about, I, and again, this has all been within the last two weeks, going through all of my old stuff and, and, and looking at it, I, I was just, uh, over, I've been overwhelmed. I've been a little overwhelmed. I, I found all the old Jedi Apprentice books, pulled those out, um, got those stashed away that, that I got things set up in my classroom. We're getting ready for school and, uh, getting all my Star Wars mugs, my Star Wars, uh, mug collection that started, you know, when I when I started teaching, I didn't even realize I was doing it, but I'm just collecting. I have like 50 mugs at school, Star Wars mugs. Nice. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. So, I guess what I'm telling everybody is I have a problem, and uh, I wouldn't say it's a problem. The only cure is more Star Wars. You know, yeah. that's that's all I need. Hey, man, uh, and I think that's what we're getting because next week is uh, was supposed to be the week of Star Wars celebration as. Yeah. And, you know, one of the th talking points of today's show is what do we think we're going to see? Because it's going to be all be virtual, essentially. I still think everything that was going to get announced is just going to get announced via online. Right. Um, so, you know, what are we what are we thinking? What are we expecting? What are we what are we getting? Right. So, yeah, you know, I'm just thinking to me, you know, we were, t we were talking about this off air. One hundred percent. I believe we're getting the Mandalorian trailer. I mean, 100%. Because mm -hmm. I think it's yep. in October is when it comes out. So yep. what do you think that Mandalorian Season 2 trailer is going to look like? Well, I I, I think it's going to be awesome and we're, we're, we're going to like it. But um, you remember how, how little was revealed in the first one? Mm -hmm. And I think this one, I, 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 at first I thought, oh, they're probably going to do the same thing, right? It's going to be something, it's not going to reveal much. It's going to be real mysterious or whatever, but we've already seen it. We've seen a whole season of it. So now if you want to bring us back to it, what is it that you're going to do to kind of hook us? And so I, I think we're going to see some space battle. I think we're going to see a couple epic lines, right? We're going to see the Mandalorian right. say a few various things. My, the, the big question is, will we see any of these characters that have, will, will there be just like a glimpse of just one, you know, and then there are others that are bigger than that character. Not, not the big one, not, not Ahsoka, not like something right. crazy like that, but could we, or even hear a voice, you know, do we hear um, someone or, yeah, I don't know. I don't, will we go to a place we've seen before? I mean, that's all stuff that right. like, I just, what could you do to get a super hyped for Mando season two? Oh, I mean, I'm I already hyped, but oh, I can know. tell you. All right, come so on. just think, just think about trailers, right? When you, you see a trailer, and there's always like that one second shot of like, oh my god, right? Yeah. So for me, there's a few different scenarios. I do not think we'll see Ahsoka. What I do think you could do to really tease people and get people hyped is one, you show Baby Yoda about to, you know, like die or in trouble or hurt or something. You know what I mean, like. <gasps> Like, oh, my God, that's that shock factor moment, right? Of, mm -hmm. like, somebody else has, like, got Baby Yoda or Baby Yoda's about to get hurt. You show – or, you you know, just some other ones. You show uh, Din Djarin holding the Darksaber, right? That would be something yeah. that would be, like, yeah. epic and huge. And this isn't, like, oh, we're going to speculate what's going to happen. This is just speculating. Things you could put in a trailer. Right. Because sometimes, sometimes you see something in a trailer and it's, like, one second of the thing. It's, like, mm -hmm. oh, well, he doesn't actually, you you know, use that item or whatever or, you know. It doesn't it doesn't end up going the way you think it's going to go, you know, and so what like they tease dark side Ray and everyone thought, oh, my God, Ray's going to go dark side. It's going to be this deal. And in the yeah. actual movie, it's literally one second. And right. It's, right. You know, but they show it in there because the shock factor. Get people excited. The right. whole deal. So I so you got to think about stuff like that. So um, another thing and this, I think, is likely mm -hmm. is I think the big the big moment in the trailer is you're going to see maybe a behind shot and it's almost like think of like a western like you know like they're going to do a quick draw yep. and it's din Djarin, and on the other side is it may from what we've known it may not actually be boba fett but it's timothy oliphant that guy who has boba fett's armor currently yeah and so you just show him staring down boba fett like they're about to fight 
that would be people would lose their minds. They're like, oh, oh my yeah. god! Like, I yeah, think that's yeah. likely. That would be cool. That would be co- even if you just saw like the, like if we saw Mando, who we know, and he, he looks like he's about to draw, and we just see from the side right. someone step in and almost get like just maybe their boot and their leg, but we're like, right. oh my god, who, like who is that? And if it looks like Boba, then that would be that'd be pretty radical. That that would be awesome. So I was thinking even something like. Not that they're going to do this, but I was trying to think of like what type of thing could you show? Like if all of a sudden we just see Mando walking past something and he looks to the side and he sees a mural that Sabine or someone has painted on a wall, right. you know, or you walk past or maybe he shows up and he says, we're going to Lothal. I mean, if he says anything about any other world we've heard, we're just like, wait a second. What? Why are we going there? What's what's happening there? I think that would be, you know, pretty, pr- pretty, pretty wild. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah the, you, you can do all that, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, you could show us, you could, yeah, you could show us a place we've been to before. Like, oh, is he on Endor? Is he at, you know, uh, is he back on Tatooine? Is he, you know, some, some of the Hoth, you know, any of these places we've been to before, you know, you could, you could use. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I, I kind of hope, like, Coruscant. I always think less is more. I always think less is more, though. But, but right. I kind of um, – that's what I'm hoping for. But I think they're going to give us – got to give us that one thing. Like, like what is that one thing that they're going to show us that we go, oh, my God, they're, they're right. going for it. Like they're, they're the, going teaser, for it the teaser for Force Awakens was the Claymore Saber, right? Yeah. That was like the what the heck is that thing. Right, right. right? That yes. was like the holy – okay, the original teaser. Then the second – then the second – then the first real trailer, right? The, like what I think is the greatest trailer ever made, right? Where Luke is talking, and then the hands on R two, yeah, like, oh god, yeah, oh god, flying through, you know, the Millennium Falcon flying through this like Star Destroyer and all this stuff, and it's like, oh my god, I mean, Great. that was the X wi- yeah. wings like coming in, yeah, yeah, but they didn't, they didn't show us, um, you know, they didn't show us anything that was like, you know, it's just it's stuff like that to build the hey, this is what the atmosphere of this movie is going to look like. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we're gonna get. Like I said, I I hope to see the Razor Crest in some sort of um, fight or something. Just like you know, a quick little shot of that. Um, but yeah, we the what I was thinking is too. Once we hear the theme, I mean, as soon as I hear like Mando's theme or just even an, a, like a trace of it in the trailer, I'm gonna get chills. I know I am, and that's why I love pull, trailers. I'm pull I, up I the, love the original Mandalorian trailer just to take a look. So in the original trailer, you see the stormtrooper helmets in the sand. You see him walking. You see him like on the spikes, right? Yeah. Um, let me see what else we got in here, just to kind of get an idea. Uh, just like set pieces. I don't okay, think him setting him him setting down the bounty. He's talking to Grief Karga. Mm-hmm. You see the people that he goes on the mission with. Uh, that are like the the heist right and then they mm-hmm. that we just see kind of hit we see the razor crest flying see him kind of pointing his gun at people and he freezes the one guy in carbonite that's the trailer but yeah. see the second but season two is we already know some of these characters so right. now you sh- now you give us as you said the hook that's why i say you show like like you know remember in season one of the episode four where the guy the the sniper has his um has his has his crosshairs right on baby yoda yeah and cara dune steps in but you just show the sniper the cro- on Baby yeah. Yoda, and you're like, oh, you know, right. it's like, oh right. my god, you know, something yes. like that. Like that could be it, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think so. Like that's why I've been going back and forth on: Are they going to do the, a similar trailer to 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 the first one? But I, I they're not because yeah, all you had yeah. to do was show us uh, an alien or a location or a set or whatever, and we were, we were blown away. I mean, that because we hadn't seen any of that before. But now that we have seen it. Yeah, what are you going to do to continue to hook us and drive us back to, to season two? I mean, already they did enough in season one. I mean, the ending of, of season one, you obviously want to go see it. But yeah, there's there's uh, to draw in those people who have never seen it, right? Who, uh, who have no idea um, what it is. They didn't see season one. Can we still hook those folks and get them get them in here? So, yeah. All right. Well, OK. After, so after Mandalorian trailer, which I say is 100 percent happening. Um, what else? So we know that a lot of those books were pushed back the higher public stuff due to, you know, coronavirus, stuff like that. So 
Um, I, I don't think we're going to see a Bad Batch trailer or teaser or anything. I think maybe they'll like kind of talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah. But is there anything on any, anything? I mean, do you think we're going to see Obi-Wan? Do you think we're going to see well, the Cassie and Andor thing? And, and you just mean like from StarWars.com? Like is StarWars.com going to you know push out something or whatever? Right. Well, uh, I, I'm basically under the assumption because I think this this has been the case, right? So like a lot of the other big announce like Comic Con and the DC event is happening today that we're filming, right? Like this, you know, would have been a Comic Con type thing, but they just kind of do their own thing. E3, all these companies just hey, we're just we're still going to release trailers and all that stuff. Just at the time, we're just not doing it in an actual event, right? The NBA had its draft lottery last night. You know the the. Republican and a Democratic convention. They're just doing online. So all these conventions that would have had thousands of people are there. Everybody has just been doing it just virtually. So, I mean, I 100% expect that Star Wars is just going to, you know, next week release a ton of trailers. Yeah, it, it, it could just be like, um, I, I kind of think, and what is her name? She's the girl who does the Thursday Star Wars show now. Um, right. Might just pop on and they're going to have some updates with her or whatever. I think it's going to be a similar style to that. Uh, or yeah, they, they'll they just drop a, a trailer on us on their YouTube channel on, on star Wars.com Twitter um, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Th things like that. I don't think there's not going to be like a panel or anything where we're sitting with a group of people and they're, and they're live streaming. It right. Or, yeah. Or no, I don't like think that. anything like that. Yeah. It's, it's just, it could be, it's a voiceover video where they're talking about here are some of the new comic books that are coming out here's something the one cool thing that they could do i mean if they want to do something i was hoping they would do this but like the thrawn ascendancy book is coming out uh september 1st and people have already got uh the early kind of uh, look at that i've seen some other podcasters and, and different youtube creators who have that and it looks really cool so maybe you could get, get like a reading from that or, or maybe we get like an early kind of um you know, leaked passage or something, not leaked, but I mean, they just decided to share a, a passage or something. That'd be kind of cool. So I don't really know. I mean, really what's taken, and I, well, I'm going to throw this out here. It's called force fest. It is a, um, something that a couple months back, some content creators decided to create this thing called force fest. You guys can check it out. I might go actually attend and see if I can just watch some panels and stuff and listen to people talk about Star Wars, they're bringing on some authors, some comic book artists, things like that, and it's going to take place during Celebration, so I thought that was pretty pretty neat. Um, I think they're, it's a fundraiser, so they're, they're raising money for a charity. Um, it's a virtual gathering for fans of the saga. Uh, it's 8.28 through 8.30. Seems pretty cool, and I got someone tagged me in some of this, and so I might go, might go check it out. But it's other podcasters, other YouTubers, and some some uh, vloggers that uh, are bloggers that you that you might know, so I thought that was pretty yeah, cool. I'm, yeah, I'm looking on the website. I mean, yeah, they've just been announcing stuff. And again, I think a lot of this stuff would have just been at announced at or during Star Wars, you know, celebration, right? So like, um, new toys, right? And I know you wanted to kind of talk about some of these. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. these, a lot of these freaking toys are pretty cool, right? Yeah, and you, you might as well call this. I mean, what what we're going to talk about right now is you you might as well call this some of this is this is celebration. I mean, this is this Friday. Um, Hasbro came out, and we we saw this whole uh, new line of of toys here. And if you get that link up, you can kind of just see some pretty impressive stuff. Um, oh, let's see, just black. They got their black series updated. Um, right, that that bounty hunter series is sick. Yeah. You got Bosk in there. You got Boba right. Fett. That's pretty cool. Right. They're doing these. Uh, oh, they got the vintage collection. So so we see some stuff there from the vintage collection, uh, which is neat. Hondo is in there. You got some Darth Vader. They got a, they got a um, Sith pack. And the Sith pack has yeah. Kylo Ren, Vader, Palpatine, just kind of like a guard, I'm um, guessing. It's kind of like a red droid, to be honest. And then, and then Maul. Right, right. They do have a cool um, Fallen uh, Order, or, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, like Electro Staff Purge Trooper, which is pretty neat. That's in the Black Series. Looks looks awesome, actually. Ez is going to so. be getting the Palpatine Force Effects lightsaber. That's Absolutely. I was I was like, what the heck? That, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, the Jedi yeah. Order. You got, uh, you got Windu, Obi-Wan, Yoda, uh, Anakin. That looks sweet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i like that they're releasing them in those packs i mean so yeah 
you can kind of get how much they are they're probably pretty expensive here we go i haven't seen pre-order my guess is it's probably a hundred dollars for the whole pack Um, no the whole pack's 30 bucks yeah i was yeah well, yeah. I, so they're not so they're so they're they're smaller. They're three point seven five inches. They're not the the big black series packs. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Oh well, sick. Yeah, I like the Sith pack. That thing's sick. Yeah, yeah. So that was like something a, that was announced a, today. Yeah, they, got so. a fir- they got first order. You've got uh, Hux and Phasma in there. Right, the resistance. I mean, this is cool. They they got like the whole they got the whole celebrate the saga is what they're calling it. You got the whole the whole gamut there. You can get Finn, Ray, Poe, C three PO, BB eight, and a Porg. Yeah, yeah. All so right, I thought that which, was which 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 pack are you getting, man? Well, I mean, again, I mean, I'm gonna have to maybe <laughs> someone is gonna have to pick up something for me because I I'm gonna get the light. I mean, gonna get you know, I gotta get Palpatine saber. I mean. You know, I gotta dive in there and get that. No, I don't know. The, these are, um, you know me. I might just get them all. Actually, well, I'm not getting any of those right now because the first thing I have to get. I'm gonna switch gears here. Is the uh, the the 40th anniversary of Empire? Is is you know this is that's that's the time we're in here. Uh, the, the there's the Lego Bespin Duel Lego mm-hmm. set is is coming out. And if you guys get a chance to look this up, it is freaking awesome. You've got Vader there. Luke's chilling out. I mean, they've already, you know, it's just, it's that whole scene right there on the uh, walkway. Uh, it's, it's awesome. So, and I love Empire Strikes Back, even though Return of the Jedi is my favorite movie. Empire is the first Star Wars movie I ever saw. So, um, kind of, you know, really, really, really like that. So, if if somebody gets this, by the way, and, and you want, uh, and you're looking to, if you get two and you want to sell one, let me know. Uh, just in case they're they're exclusively at Target on August twenty seventh. So oh man, this is bad news for me. I'm a big Funko Pop collector, as as you can yeah. see behind me. I've got like yeah. you know a lot of them. I actually only have one Star Wars. Actually, I have two, but I don't have it with me. Um, I have I have Cara Dune. I have a Boba Fett, but I I I don't I don't have him here. I, he's in Ohio. So um, the Funko Pops that they've announced, and I'm sure these are going to sell out and be ridiculously hard to find because that's how Funko Pops go. Yeah, it is the it is the concept series. Yep. So from the original George yep. Lucas concept, so you have Star Killer, right, which was the original name. You know that basically Luke was you know was was going to be right. Just uh, you know, imagine Luke. You know, he's got like he's got like Anakin type goggles on. Got a got a uh, blaster there, um, and then you have Darth Vader holding a blue lightsaber. That was kind of just original concept. And then, geez, Chewbacca, man, the original concept for Chewbacca. I mean, he's just doesn't looks nothing like him. Right. Yeah. This is pretty cool. This is based off of Ralph Ralph McQuarrie's um, you know, original concept art. If you've ever done any searching for just old images or, or, you know, whatever it's, it's, it's right. pretty like famous. Jedi been Bindu books. And all that, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You, I would you, love you to can... actually go through that book at some point. Oh yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's They've actually, cool. it's inspired a lot of, uh, other, you know, the, the, the animated series, Dave Filoni. I mean, people who are around star Wars really like to go back and look at Ralph's work and, and see what he was thinking early on and get some of the early, early concepts. Yeah. But you're right. The Darth Vader one looks absolutely sick. The Darth um, Vader one looks sick. I might have to get it. Him holding a blue lightsaber, and that's that's yeah. just really cool. Yeah, and if you look at the Chewbacca, his mask, is a di- his mask is different too. It's a different kind of design. Right. So here, here's an example. In Rebels, we have um, Zeb. So if you remember Zeb, right. uh, who's with Ezra and and mm-hmm. crew, um, literally this Chewbacca looks exactly like Zeb. So yeah. that's that's where they got the inspiration. Uh, for him which is cool so they, they, yeah but you're right yeah you get the star killer i mean these are these are sick these are sick i actually think these are these are the, like if you ever were like ah, i'm not really into funko pops i these ones you, this is something you gotta get. i love like, them man i got mine i got mine all all right there i think they're i think they're cool because the thing is that they all look the same regardless of uh who you go with like so and so they make them for literally anything and so because they're all the same design, like toys are kind of different because every, you know, the toys are all, they're all different. Like they're different sizes, they're different. Things. These are all basically uniform. So it's just like, hey, different 
variants and different versions and stuff like that. And so I think that's like, that's really cool. Cause you, there's like a, you know, well, I like, you know, say, I, say you pick a character, right? It's like, well, I want Luke. Well, there's like 10 different Luke Skywalker Funko Pops. You got the one of him with old, like old Luke, um, with like a hood on, you got one of him young. There's the, the one I really want is it's Luke on Dagobah and he's got Yoda in his, like on his back. And that one is awesome. There is a Han Solo Frozen and Carbonite one that is also really cool. I have that on my like, Amazon wish list. I just don't keep buying it for some reason. Um, and so, like, that one is really cool. There's a lot. There's a lot of them that are that are really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I those are those are some I'm definitely going to get. I don't have a lot of them, but, but uh, yeah, the ones I do have are, are Star Wars related or Game of Thrones related. So, uh, these are, these are, yeah, I think you have to get these. These are, these are special. So, yeah, I mean, just some other cool ones here. And there's, uh, there's, there, there's been a bunch of new ones recently. Um, there's Mandalorian on a Blurg, which is cool. You've got Dark Side Ray, and then some okay. of them are bigger. Like there's, because they're all, they're all roughly around like. So if you get them in the store, they're like eight dollars. If you go on Amazon, the price fluctuates, and sometimes you'll find one cheap. Yeah, uh, but then sometimes they get bought out, and so the price goes up. There's definitely a Funko Pop market, okay? Like, I mean, I mean, I'm like there because they, because they, then they would do so many just limited runs of some of these that they end up becoming pretty difficult, um, pretty dif- pretty difficult to buy. Um, so yeah, just some other new ones that have come out recently, right? So. Uh, like right now, um, you can get the um, from Jedi Fallen Order the the Inquisitor with the mask. It's like four bucks on Amazon, but in a week it'll probably be like twelve. And so you really gotta kind of watch, gauge, buy at the right time, uh, and and just and just go from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So so this is cool. It was, it was a big kind of. Um some big updates on, on a, on a Friday and people are getting hyped. It would be this week before, you know, what they typically would do, right. Is they would show all of this and then going into star Wars celebration, you would have the store, the store would be open. You could go in, you could buy these things. They would let you know about it. There'd be a huge freaking line. There'd be limited edition stuff. I mean, there's also celebration specific stuff that they would have had too. I don't know if that's, you know, what, what the deal is with, with any of that, but, um, yeah, really, really cool updates on toys and merchandise and stuff. So, um, anything else there before I switch over here to? Uh, no, 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 no. Go right ahead. All right. So I want to switch over to the Thrawn Ascendancy. I mentioned it just uh, briefly. So if you're interested in this, even if you haven't read the Thrawn trilogy, um, so I think that's he's just Thrawn alliances, um, and I just said it. Uh, the third book, Treason. There we go. Thrawn Treason. Uh, this is the prequel to that, if if you will. It's sort of the setup. It's it's Thrawn Ascendancy Chaos Rise Rising Chaos Rising arrives September first. Uh, it's available right now for pre order. Some like I said, some creators who are going to be reviewing it have gotten access to it and have posted. I think like quick 10, 15 second clips of them just going leafing through the pages. It's uh, got some real nice like. It's blue. I mean, it's just so weird. There's so much ink in this. It's got to be an expensive book. I mean, it's just, it's totally different than something. I've never seen anything like it. It's, it, it's really neat. So it's, um, let's see the description here. Oh, so yeah, this, this is all set up. So before we see Grand Admiral Thrawn, right, who stands out with his blue, uh, tinged skin and his glowing red eyes, before that, before he climbed to the rank, climbed the ranks of the Empire, uh, he made his home in the unknown regions. Thriving among the nine ruling families of the Chiss Ascendancy. And I actually think we're going to learn uh, a lot, some, some really cool stuff. I, 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 I for we're going to get to go really be in the unknown regions and understand what power is out there, what danger or threat could be out there. And I, honestly, I, I, I could see them using some of this as uh, to, to propel us or, or move us forward in another campaign after episode nine like if you wanted to pick up again with ray and company or you wanted to move to you know 30 years past ray and just say forget those actors let's let's move to people who were who became students of ray and and her academy and what did they face i think you it could be something that they're going to face from the unknown region uh i think it'd be it'd be kind of wild and i think whatever threat is out there whatever power or mystery is out there 
we're gonna get to get to know through the Chiss ascendancy. It's I think it's just gonna be fantastic. So I'm excited for that because I've always liked Thrawn and he's he's always um there's there's some things that he's kept really close to the chest and we don't really know exactly. Uh I mean, we kind of get that in, in the Thrawn trilogy, his motives are like he's prepared. He wants the galaxy prepared for for a threat that uh, is is beyond the unknown regions. And so there's something out there, bigger, badder, stronger, more dangerous, in his opinion. And he wanted the Empire to be strong and didn't believe that all the resources should be compiled into a Death Star. He felt that the fleet is what was important and we should strengthen the fleet. And so I think that's cool and i i hope we we learn a lot more about that so stay tuned on that I, like i said i'm finishing up um uh, that last thrawn book i never did finish it so that is going to be done next week and uh then i'll be ready to kind of discuss that as as it comes out and like i said you can jump right into it i, I i'm pretty sure you can just go right in um pick it up and start reading start learning about about thrawn and the ascendancy and and all of that so do you think we'll see any remnants of Thrawn or Thrawn at some point in Mandalorian. I would love it. I, I, I would absolutely love it. I, I still think there's a way. Um, how, so, so what do you, what do you think? I mean, I know that the, the next book is coming out, but what do you, I mean, what do you think is, I mean, cause we're going to, at some point we're going to get more about him. What do you think is next for, what is next for Thrawn? Well, the whole thing, the whole idea here is Ezra Bridger takes him out in, Rebels right, right, right. and yeah. paves the way. I think Thrawn would have been a game changer during. I mean, he was again against the against the Death Star. Maybe he would have kept uh, he the, the fleet more strengthened and more mobile, right. um, or better at patrolling the galaxy. I so that's a big move. That that's huge. And he's off the chessboard. He's who knows off where the ch- off the uh, the chessboard. Chis- board <laughs> uh yeah so so what so yeah where where is he what's what's going on um that's going to be the whole pickup for right. rebels season five it's not gonna be rebels but whatever it's going to be the you know uh with, with ahsoka and sabine going to find ezra that whole thing is going to be we're going to learn something about that but i do think even in that we're not going to see his, i don't think he dies i don't think he's someone who is right i think he may even come back it would not surprise me if if they pulled a whole heir to the empire situation, and not that they would bring those back and say, yeah, that they're can't. they might have Timothy Zahn go back and, and redo some of it, uh, or they might want to write their own story, and and decide that he could kind of bring attempt to bring the empire together or strengthen the republic or something to prepare for another threat. But I don't know, you know, th- like what they kind of did in the sequel trilogy is. And they, I don't think they were planning this. I think they had to do it out of out of necessity in episode nine. Is they create something in the unknown regions? They create this whole Sith fleet that's out there. Yeah. Uh, but to me, Thrawn has always been talking about something beyond that, and something well before Palpatine was ever amassing any power. So, yeah, that that's that's what I think is 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 tricky. So I don't know. I mean. It's 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 a mystery because they also the first order kind of um, rises from the ashes of the empire and they do so through the unknown region. They then come back into the galaxy and behind them you have Palpatine rising a freaking Sith fleet. So what in the world is going on out there and how what do the Chiss think about it? Uh, it, cool thing in if legends, they even know about it because it because it's yeah the unknown it could, region is is so big they may have no clue that that's going. I mean that's right because that could be way you know way over there. I mean it could be. Yeah, you know, dangerous to navigate. Billions, yeah, right. billions, of, and it seems like I mean, Exegol is not an easy place to get to. So I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, and and so in in um, I mean, they actually have individuals who I they we believe are force sensitive, right? Who are called Skywalkers who help navigate uh, some of that dangerous right. uh, space. I think it's like li- yeah. See, I think it's likely that that you know Thrawn um, after so it, you know. By the time we by the time we run into Ezra and Thrawn again, I, if Thrawn may not even care. I mean, because the, if the Empire is gone, I don't think he cares anymore, and he's probably just dealing with the Chiss. I mean, they have their own their own battles and their own wars going on. I think Thrawn actually ends up becoming like almost in a weird way a good guy, is wh- where he oh, will yeah. ultimately end up. Like I, the, what's what's tough about him is that um, 
He could be one. He could be. He could. He could be in one of the ships that shows up at the end. Well, I think we're actually going to learn exactly why Thrawn did venture as far as he did outside of. You know, I I think he might have. I think we might have been misled a little bit in why Thrawn is where he is in the galaxy and what he's what he's doing and what his true purpose is. Uh, in infiltrating the Empire and getting them ready to face this threat. I think we're going to learn a lot more about that in this prequel setup here. And I, I guess I just wish I knew how much like he was being you know, directed or talked to by story group. Did they say, hey, let's set this up and let's set something up where there's something even beyond the unknown region that, that our characters later, not just 30 years after Return of the Jedi, but 30 years after that. So 60 years. Like, is there something that they're going to have to face and we can then set the ground, like lay all that foundation in the the books, hint at it, tease at it with Ezra Bridger, Ahsoka, Sabine, and then keep teasing that there's something there and push it down to this point where, you know, we have some, some crazy attack on the galaxy and the whole galaxy has to kind of come together. Come together. Um, I don't want to say using Vong War, but I mean something like that could could very well be you know, an an option. One of the unique things about the Yuzen Vong was that they like the force. Uh they were outside of the force and almost as if they were and and you couldn't necessarily use it against them. Uh you could throw objects and stuff and use your uh force abilities on yourself and amplify yourself to fight them, but they in a, in a lot of ways um the force was not something that it, it was it was it was it was this counter i mean they were outside of it and it was weird it was it was you know really our our our, our buddy uh david fogel is is covering that series actually the new jedi order so that's that's on the contingency plan podcast but i don't know man i mean that's kind of what i'm hoping for is some major huge threat that puts us on this other big adventure where we, where we can go into a whole new set of stories. It just, it just put know, the Skywalker saga behind us and say, it's awesome. It was great. It is what it is. But then what is now going forward? Um, Ray's legacy, her Academy, and, and then move, move us forward. You know, you know, we could be dealing with some stuff in the unknown regions in the upcoming uh, high Republic books. And you could be like, because it's 400 years ago. So, it could be stuff that happens that they deal with, and then it's just not really that big of a deal anymore. And the main, you know, where we're at because it's 400 years later, but it could tell us about some of the things in the unknown region, which we can then think, oh, there's these are some of the species that live out there and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know when they would want to do this or whatever. And I think it's you kind of have these mystery boxes, like as JJ says, that you never want to open. The mystery box should should remain closed, but you get close to it. And you start to things get bigger and more grand or whatever. The, I think why people like Mandalorian so much is that right now it's just this action packed, you know, um, adventure. And we're, we're learning about that character and it's just all kind of contained right there. And it's pretty neat. The galaxy is huge. We got to remember too, like there are systems, oh, it's, thousands it's of, enormous, sy- you know, yeah. it's, 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 so there's stories instead of stories, which is, which is what makes it great. But what's that grand galactic story that they're going to tell, uh, next and, Right now, there are we, we've got you know possibly the Kenobi series, um, Cassian Andor. Um, we've heard rumors in the past of other trilogies. They've said let's slow down. Uh, now that they're working on the yeah, as you said, that they're working on this these these uh, the High Republic. That you could open the door to learning more about the galaxy as a whole, and and other functions, other other regions of of the galaxy. Um, yeah, that would be that would be really neat. What, one example is, I often talk about Mortis, and I talk about the the anomaly that is that is Mortis and and the Mortis gods. Um, what they did in Legends was was wild. I mean, basically having the galaxy face uh, a force wielder, um, a force user who was as powerful as the father. Luke had to face Abeloth, and Abeloth was imprisoned. They had these great devices. Um, great like gravity wells that were holding Abeloth in place so that she could not attack the galaxy and control and do that she's had massive amounts of power and so if you had something that ancient and, and you learn about some of something like that in the high republic it'd be kind of cool i don't think they're going to do that but i just I'm, I'm trying to make a connection to legends there and think back on on what is the the next big grand story that that you can that you can tell so you know yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. It's just gonna be interesting to see, you know, where we where we go forward with a lot of these characters because, uh, I mean, for years, right, we've always been held under the big movies, and now yeah. we don't we don't have those, so it's like it's like wide open, right? I mean, it's yeah. just it's 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 a free for all. We we got the Bad Batch, we got Mandalorian, we got you know, it's like we can go anywhere we want, right? We get stuff in the middle and so it's like okay it's and so it's just it's it is it is just crazy to think about like where we could possibly go in star wars right now because um it feels like all the limitations are off and we we can just go wherever we want well which is i think they wanted this right you wanted to complete the skywalker saga have it be done and over you had your 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 legacy characters um luke leia han wrapped that up um those actors were still you know, alive and, and wanted to, to be in the films. And that was great. And it was awesome. And it, it works. Um, but now that it's over, this is sort of that defining sort of like, what is Disney going to do? Like this is now there. I mean, I, I feel like now that they've got through the Skywalker saga, now tell us what you're going to do. Like what, what is going to be your next, like the big saga, or is it going to be that? Is it, is, you know, we had got the Mandalorian, which is awesome. We're off to something great there. And they should they should keep up with that, but you've got to you've got to think that the books that they're writing, um, some of the world building, the galaxy building that they're doing, is they're going to want to tie some of that together into a great grand adventure uh, or another saga. I think. I mean, that's that's the movies. I think the the TV shows are great, and they're they're going to keep. Um, they've already got that going with the Mandalorian. They've got potential for an Ezra Bridger let's go rescue Ezra Bridger situation in animation that's awesome and that's all I see right now I don't really know I don't think we're going to go get like a a High Republic TV show we have a book series that's going to teach us more about the galaxy the nature of the force the Jedi and the Sith and possibly other individuals that are a threat and then from there um yeah what are our care how do you move the timeline forward how do you push on past uh Ray and company and 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 continue the story, right? I mean, because you could do all this gap filler and all this kind of stuff, but the big movies are when you push us forward and we don't know what's next. We've never gotten past that point. We have no idea. I can tell you in those gaps, like things that are going to happen later, things that have happened before, things that are maybe even happening at the same time as The Mandalorian. There are books to kind of do all of that. But the great unknown is when you push beyond uh, episode nine. And you tell us what happens next. So I, I, that's why I see all of these other pieces, if they're smart, and I think they are. And Story Group is is supposed to be this thing that's being keeping things cohesive, and we're we're building towards something. Uh, you often bring up Marvel, but I, I want that. I want them to be doing something like that and driving us towards this this next great adventure. So what do you think? You think start. they're doing that? I mean, do you think they're actually planning that, or do you think they're just going? I don't know. They, I feel like they're. Sh- I feel like they're shooting from the hip right now. I mean, I think. I think right now, I, I would say. I mean, right now we, you know, there's been rumors of a of a 2022 movie and and stuff like that. But even still, all the all those rumors have been. Well, we might do a solo project of this, and um, you know, uh, what's his name, uh, John Boyega. You know, there's been rumors where he's like, I'm done with Star Wars. Like, I'm not. I've, I've, I've filled it out. Right. There's, there's rumors of maybe wanting to explore, uh, Adam with Adam driver more. I'm sure he, I, I feel like he would be willing to come back. He's kind of a, Adam driver is kind of a, just, he's just an interesting guy. Uh, if you've ever watched early interviews with him, um, he like can't watch, he like refuses to watch, um, his own movies and, and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, you just see with him, I think he's just a wild card. You just don't know. Right. Uh, Cause he's like one of those guys who's like so artistic that it's like, you know, I, you know, it just depends. I feel like it just with him. It's just one of those things where it just depends on when you ask him and when you get him signed up, you know? Um, so I, I hope so. I would love a Ben Solo movie. Let me just, um, let me just, let me just, let but, me just if, come okay, on. Go ahead. <laughs> Is that, I mean, you said it, you said it. You would love a Ben Solo movie, but would you like a Ben Solo movie that is like just it's all about him with Luke? I mean, is that like what would what would the Ben or what are you talking about Ray and I Ben think, coming I think, back? I think you'd have to do Ray and Ben. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I want. That right. is because, what because because what I what I ultimately want. I don't want Star Wars episode I, if when when the day comes when we do Star Wars episode ten. Mm-hmm. I think Star Wars Episode Ten needs to be 
somehow resurrected Ben Solo and Ray's children. Okay. Because I don't, I, I just don't think you can do. But would they show us the resurrection, or would they? What are you saying that it just starts off, or, or are you saying we would? I, I say, I, love I say, you let's have, do this. I say, I say you have. I say what you do is you have filler movies. Uh huh. And then, because if you're going to do it, you have to do 10, 11, 12. It has to be a trilogy of movies. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. And and so, but I what and so that's what I would do. And it needs but now to be, hold on. Th- it needs to be twenty years from now, and okay. it needs to, or ten years. You know, it has there has to be some time, and you and it needs to be the children or or something. It I know. Oh, the Skywalker saga. No, Star Wars is the Skywalker saga. Okay, let's get that out of the fucking way first. Yeah. All right, Star Wars is the Skywalker saga. None of this. Oh, well, ten, eleven, twelve won't be the. Well, then I'm not watching. Hey, okay, hey, because. Now. Look, I'm all for start. Like, I'm all for branching out the Mandalorian and everything is great. But when it comes to the main series, if the Skywalkers aren't there, I'm not there. Okay, <laughs> this is crazy. You're crazy, dude. No, I, man. I no, I don't I, think there is, there is no in between. So for me, so 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 for me, one of the things that I loved about um, Fate of the Jedi was learning about Jason Solo's life and his daughter and the potential that his daughter would one day be this great ruler force wielder in the galaxy there were tribes of sith trying to hunt her down he turns to the dark side to save his daughter i mean all that kind of stuff because he had a vision like i do very much so want to see um something more with ben solo and i i I just yeah god i want I, i want more of him but um and and so the continuation of that, whether you call it the Skywalker saga or not, call it the Solo saga for all I care, right? I mean, oh no, no, no yeah, it's, all I'm, yeah, all I'm getting at is yeah. if Star Wars Episode Ten is just completely new characters, completely this new thing, and it's just its own thing, and hey, we're starting our new wave of stuff, and has lit- and has nothing to do with, then it shouldn't be Episode Sp- Ten. Then it should. That's my thing. So what yeah, I'm no, saying yeah, yeah. is, if they call it episode ten, I got you. And it has yeah. nothing to do with it. Then I'm out. I'm no, all yeah, no, for no. No, they, I'm I, not. I'm I'm all for Star Wars going. I mean, the Mandalorian, all this. Right, right. I'm the video games. I'm all for Star Wars going on with different characters in different places, doing different things. But when it comes to the main series, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they like, let's say that. Let's say. You know, The Mandalorian wasn't a TV show and it was a movie and it was Star Wars Episode 10. Would you feel differently about it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You see? The, yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, that, that's fine. That's that's a good clarification because I, I thought you were saying, you know, like, but no, no, no. Oh, if, no, no, if no, they're, no, no, if no, they're yeah. If they just were to start something, let's let me pose this to you. If they go beyond Episode uh, 9, right, and they push the timeline forward, but they don't call it Episode 10. They call it episode yeah. one and they say we're yeah. starting something new, right? right. It's, it's not That's so, fine. Ep, so episode one, the Phantom Menace is the episode one of the Skywalker saga, right? Not the solo saga. This could be episode one of the solo saga or something right. else. You're cool with that. Yeah. 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 I get you. No, there's no reason to go. Yeah. they they, sh- that would be the dumbest. That would be dumb. That would be entirely dumb just to, to say, uh, here's this new guy and he's not in any way related to the solos or the Skywalkers, but we're going to call this episode 10. Well, just cause we, we, that we, doesn't you, do make sense. See, you do see it in other franchises, right? Where you have like, you know, some of these franchises that have like 12, 13 movies, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. then at some point it's like, none of these characters are the same. And you know, right. like maybe maybe it's the villain that's the same, but then sometimes it's not. I mean, like horror movies, my God, there's like you know they like, you know they all have right. like, you know like like the Alien series, right? I mean, there's like 13 movies. I don't know how many movies there are. I just know there's a lot, but it's like, are they all connected? Maybe I guess I don't know, but like they don't have the same characters and things right. are different. You know, this is different because this is so like. One through nine, as much as like, you know, I have we have criticisms of like what they did in the story of people have criticisms of the prequels because, well, Jar Jar's involved and stuff like that. And then people have criticisms of, you know, the sequels of, you know, the story. And, you know, we've talked about Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. All that's fine. But as far as continuity, 
with the characters like being the same and like the way they look and like all that stuff. I mean, I nobody's done it better. I mean, you're talking about 40 years. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's right. amazing. It is, it is. It is. It is so well done. Yeah. It is. I mean, literally just going from, I mean, you look at like you, and McGregor is like, I mean, as Obi-Wan, I mean, we think of him as Obi-Wan more than we think of, Alec Guinness is Obi Wan, yeah. and they did such an amazing job of making him look like him and talk and talk like him, and and and, and he. Fe- I mean, it's it feels completely fluid yes. going into it. Yeah, and then you know because Darth Vader, James Earl Jones voices him in the prequels, and then mm-hmm. you know and and all of that stuff. So it just ends up working so well together. Um, and you know, a lot of that is because of like, you know, the, the, in 1989 when George Lucas redid stuff and they touched stuff up again in two thousands. Um, and then, you know, switching Yoda from CG and all that stuff and how they've just blended it all together. No other movie franchise has that going for it, but maybe the, maybe the exception of Avengers just because, but it's so recent, certainly nothing over the span of like 14 years. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, hundred I mean, yeah. percent. Yeah, I get you. That, yeah. And that's and here's the thing, though. I guess um, with that, yeah, it, it would be different because we would get if we start a new saga or if we just continue with this side, this this offshoot of like this Ben Solo, pick up with that and and, and kind of move yeah. forward. Um, yeah, are we just only going to get a trilogy? Is it just like one more trilogy and then we don't go right. on another great nine film? Uh, saga because I would love for them to start up some other nine like a, like a you know three trilogy thing and really just yeah. drive home a great arc like a huge arc start to finish yeah like, I mean that's yeah you know. if they said if they said hey we're starting a Knights of the Old Republic series and it's going to be nine epic films and we're going to do it that I'm 100 percent down for it yeah yeah, yeah me too I me mean, too okay now yeah. I'm gonna keep pressing this though so if we are but I'm all, all the only point I'm trying to make about the whole thing is if they said we're going to we're going to start um start whatever the next Star Wars movie is, right? Mm-hmm. Like let's say hey, we are starting fresh, okay? We're going to go 20 years into the future. It's going to be all new characters. There'll be remnants of the last stuff, but there's no ties to the Skywalkers and they call it Star Wars episode 10. That's that's I'm out. that's baloney. That is absolutely yeah. baloney. I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I'm out. And, like, and the only reason they, they call it that. if they call it Star Wars uh, a fresh start, you know, right. and they right. don't say it's episode 10, well then I'm in. Then you're in. I got you. I got you. Now yeah. the only way I would be okay if they did like an episode 10 thing is if there is a connection. Yeah, if, you if go, there is, if, that's if there is, if you just all of a sudden tell me that there's a new, like if all of a sudden I come across a, a character whose whose last name is Solo or is Skywalker and it's 200, 300 years later, and I'm like, right. well, then wait, what happened with Ray and ben? and that's a whole gap now. We have 200 years right. to, to right. tell a story. Or, or it's like or it's like something where it's it's like kind of like Ray. Like Ray at the end is revealed to be a Palpatine, which for whatever, you know, whatever. That just. Uh, let's just. I'm just going to use this as an example. Say we go on this. It's a new trilogy, new pieces, whatever. And then at the end, you find out that whatever our new character is, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, you find like out. Oh, hey, they're actually a uh, Skywalker, right? right? Okay, then that's a cool way to do it. That like, is cool. It's kind of. It's kind of yeah. like um, uh, Jumanji, right? Yeah. So the original movie came out. It was cool. Robin Williams, great movie, all right. that stuff, right? Then, you know, the first one with The Rock, right? It's its own story, right? But it, you, there's a connection to it, right? Because they get into the game and all this stuff, and then they see the house that uh, Robin Williams' yeah. character lived in. Like right. that's 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 a that's such a good way to carry on something years later like kind of pay tribute to it but hey we're doing our own thing mm-hmm. um you know it was like it was like what i loved about uh what i loved about Jurassic World i thought Jurassic World was brilliant when they go to the old park and they like play the old music but it's oh, still yeah. inside of its yeah. own thing and that's like that's the way you do it the only other franchise i think that ever did it uh well two more franchises that i think did it really really well was um 
X-Men with the Days of Future Past movie, right? Where it's like, hey, we're get, we have we have the original cast and we have the our new younger cast, but it's like a time jump thing, and so you get to have them both, you know. Um, that remember that's the one where they go back in time. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so like that was cool. And then I think Star Trek. I thought the Star Trek trilogy. Yeah. Uh, that J.J. Abrams uh, did was genius, right? The first movie, hey, like they go back, they they cause this, they they figure out how to go back in time, cause this rift, and now you have these new people, and then you have Spock in there, and you know it's its complete own story, but it mirrors in a different kind of way the original, so we can do it as a reboot without touching or ruining or rebooting the uh, uh you know a, a original series and if they wanted to do this with star wars if they want to do something like that too i'd be fine with it right we already have the way between worlds where you could possibly cause different timelines um yeah. you know and and stuff like that and like, i mean let's say i mean if they like 50 years from now let's say they want to reboot star wars right and they say hey we want to redo it we want to do anakin the whole thing and they do it like a way Star Trek did it. I, I mean, I'd, I'd be fine with it. I mean, I probably wouldn't, but who knows what, you know. Right. <laughs> but, but, I mean, if you had to do it, that's how I would do it. Right. The pref- That would not be the preference. We'd rather them just do something. Right. Here's what right. I'd rather them do. And, first of all, yeah, you're right. Leonard Nimoy being in that and making the connection between exactly. the old yeah. so the, and the new right. is there's cool. way, Yeah. There's ways. There's totally ways to do it. Yeah, 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 for sure. What, what I think would be neat, as you said, let's say you did say, I see, I would have to wait and see episode 10 if they, if, if I thought if it's taking, if all of a sudden you told me it's some other group of Jedi or, or whatever, right. some, some person, but in that story, a young boy or girl learns that they were a descendant of, yeah. you know, a Skywalker or and that's, Solo. And, that, like, and that's oh, the big reveal. And that's the right. big reveal at the end, right? At the end. Or, yeah, and, and what I'm really what I'm really driving toward, I, I would love to see, God, I would love this. I would love to have all of that legacy and everything on a character and them not be the best. Like, they're, they're not yeah. good enough. Like, they actually then maybe aren't even chosen to buy, buy another master. They don't have the ability. Even though they've got the mighty Skywalker blood, it's so diminished or whatever he's so far away and 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 like that that character then goes on some some you know maybe the jedi drift too far away because what is the whole point of you know ray and and she's like like the jedi live on like the jedi live on through ray through ray skywalker and her academy there, there's some legacy there there is a legacy yeah. now that that gets to be carried on and we're going to see it in some way so whether that's in episode 10 or they just start off with a whole new saga that's that's fine. I would even be cool if it was one of Ray's students who we start to follow. And Ray is and you go ahead and do a big time jump. Don't show us Daisy Ridley. So right. All that all that time there. If you wanted like uh Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley to to, you know, 20 years later as they grow older, right? If you said, "Hey, 20, 25 years, we're probably going to come back to you guys and do a big age gap filling series where we talk about you as a master and that kind of cool stuff." That might be that might be neat, but they might just say, "Let's skip that for now." Let's jump to one of her students, see if we can get a cameo or get a couple things with Daisy in there and then pick up on some other kid who is faced with just this insane task of saving the galaxy. I mean, right. yeah, yeah, I don't know. And that'd be great. Yeah. And, and, and that'd be great if you do it, if you if you do it like that. You and, know, you know, hey. and then I'm all then I'm all for a Star Wars episode 10. I just it, it has to be it has to be connected. Right. I mean. Again, I love new I love new Star Wars stories. I'm I'm all for them. I, like Rogue One, I think is I think actually they probably looked back at Rogue One and said we made a huge mistake by killing them because we could have made more movies because it did so well, right? Um Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, like I would love to know more about I would I would have loved for Jin Urso to have lived um and then continued on throughout I, I mean, I totally think you could have done two more. You could have done two more movies, J- and then had Jin Erso die at the end, right? Of, you know, yeah. Of, you mean just push um, it back, like like with the Cassian series, they're pushing it back a little bit and showing what he did before. Before, Go, right? But I'm yeah. sa- I'm saying I'm saying if you had done, let's say, you know, Rogue One, two, and three, and say she dies, um, in three, you know, during yeah. what would essentially be Return to the Jedi timeline. Oh, and you get to see that. And you, wow. and, and, yo, that exactly. No, exactly. Yeah, I, I think actually, uh, you could have done it like, like that. I mean, I had they known it would have done that well, especially Disney at that time, they would totally not have died. 
Um, because I think you still, even even if they live, um, I still think with the end scene of Vader just mowing people down is still enough to um, have it be like, oh, okay, you know, like it's still pretty heartbreaking and crazy and 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 whatever. Um, yeah. And then Leia gets it, and it's hope, and okay, do, you know, return or a new yeah. hope starts like right there. Right. Um, so. And then I think, you know, we could have you could have had a Rogue One, two or whatever you want to call it, take place around the same time as Empire Strikes Back could actually honestly you could honestly do you could rope that into like some what was then Shadow of the Empire, you know, Mm -hmm. type stuff. And you could have you could have done some you could have done some stuff there. So, I mean, I think Rogue One's one of the one of the best new original Star Wars stories. I think it just I it sucks that they died because now you can't. You know, you can't do more. You, you can't do more with them. And I know they're going to do the Cassian Andor thing, but to be honest, it's like, I don't know. Prequels for me, um, I mean, like the Star Wars prequels are different because it's like Anakin as a kid and like how did he become Darth Vader? So it's so different. But a lot of prequels for me, um, I just I just tend to not like as much because, just because it's not, it's you know, it's not new, right? You're just, you're just seeing them become that person uh, that you already know they kind of become. Yeah, I guess it, it it depends on the character. Like Darth Vader is interesting because he is the great oh, Sith, yeah. like this you know huge figure, and and he's super evil and whatever. Um, so to see that origin story is is radical. Versus right. Cassian does have a great backstory, I'm sure, and is going to be awesome. And he clearly in the movie indicates that there is right. a lot. He's gone through a lot. That he's been fighting this fight for a right. long, long time. Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. Well, because uh, yeah. Yeah, and my only other criticism of the Andor Cassian Andor series is that he's playing himself, and so it's like, well, now he's older than he was in Rogue One, and you'll see that on screen, and it just kind of, to me, always looks and feels weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because Anakin's the prequels are totally different because it's when we, the first time we see Darth Vader, we don't know he's Luke's dad, and he's this big machine, and we've heard about his dad, and he was this great Jedi Knight, and so it's like. The prequels are not just Anakin. It's Obi Wan as a kid, and Qui Gon, and Yoda, and this great. How did the Jedi fall? I mean, there's so much to that story that's not just Anakin. Um, I mean, there's like tons of characters. Um, but then, like Solo, I think maybe there's one more. You know, we want Solo too, and then that's really about it. I mean, mm-hmm. what yeah. uh, what more? What more are you really going to do? That's gonna. How much further can you stretch that story? Yeah, and really I see. These- I ca- yeah, I think I think real quick. I think the Cassian Andor series. I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to be good. Like, who knows? It could be amazing. But I mean, just in my head, trying to wrap my ha- head around what it's going to be, I, I I certainly don't think I'm going to be as as interested in it as I will be with the Obi Wan mini series or um, obviously Mandalorian. Yeah. So the more the more that gap is is uh, filled in, we start we know more about it, and so there's less mystery, and we don't really. Uh, which is right. fine. That's why you know Rebels was so cool because we were like, this is this is great. We're getting to see the beginnings of the Rebel Alliance and we're seeing the rise of the Empire and all that kind of stuff. And it's that is that's neat. And there's still some room there. The, the crime syndicate stuff is cool. So Solo Two and learning about the crime syndicates is is awesome. It's a whole another aspect that that I like. But you're right. As as you at what point you know d- does it? They're all just start starting to kind of complement one another. And then I think if you want to make it really intriguing and, and very interesting, like the Cassian Andor series, you got to walk some of those uh, those characters from Clone Wars or the Rebels or whatever onto the onto the screen, uh, you know, on, onto the big yeah. screen, and and let's see who they are, have them interact with Cassian, or show us, you know, some really interesting story, or I, I you know, I don't I don't know. It's I I'm kind of with you. I'm not really. I haven't speculated much about that or, or thought much about it just because I'm not so sure it's going to be like how interesting it's it's going to be. So, I don't yeah. know. So what okay, so okay, let me ask you this. What of what we know, what are you most of what we know is is coming? What what are what are you most excited for? Well, I'll give them to you in in, in order, which okay. So the, like you, just you mean you mean movies and TV or all of it? Come the, on, whole, the whole deal. Bo- the book bo- including you know the books yeah. we have the Higher public, we get Fallen Order two is is going to be yeah. coming. Squadrons, all that stuff. So from what we know, like things that are hinted at and rumored, nothing there. There's nothing rumored about a Ben Solo Ray continuation. That's right. the story yeah. timeline moving forward. I think it's going to happen eventually, but but that would be that would be number one if there was something, but there's not. 
Um, so Mandalorian season two, number one, that is, that is number, that's the most anticipated thing. Um, behind that is the high Republic series. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of even think, more, even more than Obi-Wan. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, the Obi-Wan series, I think is going to be cool, but also for me, like Cassie and Andor, what can you show me? I really don't know, man. I, I, I think we're going to see Obi-Wan struggling with everything that, that took place. I think we're going to see how how he deals with all of that. I don't know. But I, I honestly don't know. Like how He chooses the name Ben. I mean, he's a hermit. He does. He's, he's protecting Luke. We're going we're gonna to see some of that or whatever. But to me, I guess, the, like how far can you push that series? I know how far you can push. I know that there are boundaries on it, and I almost know what the boundaries are and what he what he can and well, can't we, do. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I'm like, I'm like, oh shoot, like that's that's as far as we'll ever go. So what inside of that box can you tell me that's really gonna just make me go? This this is awesome. There will be cool moments for sure. Now right. watch, you know, several years later, I'll be talking. It's the greatest freaking series, and, I, and Obi Wan is like my favorite character. So well, and I mean, and it's, it's Ewan McGregor's playing it, and so it, I mean, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be high quality, but I think it ha- I think it stands the most to lose, which is which is the scary, which is kind of the which is scary. Yeah, and I don't, th- and I, it's like I I don't trust. It's kind of like I don't know. It's kind of like you know like bungee jumping i think you know for like because it's like well you're gonna bungee jump and you know the guy's hooking you up he's putting you in the harness like it's this guy's job obviously people don't die i mean obviously there are people that do die but it's like it's not like one out of every 10 person dies or or they wouldn't be able to continue it you know as 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 a business right right but at that same time, in the back of your mind, and you're thinking, you you just seen like 15 people bungee jump, and it was scary, but they were fine. But in the back of your mind, you're thinking, there is still a chance. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to I lose mean? here. Like, My life. There is, yeah. <laughs> there is still a chance. Right. <laughs> like, and that is, I'm with you. That's how I kind of feel about Obi-Wan, where I'm like, it's not, it's going to be good. It's going to be cool. But there is a chance that it's not. Yeah, it's kind of like, look, I, I could do something really cool and jump off of this cliff into some water. I might break my leg and it might be too high, like right on that, that edge of like, you know, OK, but the loss there is a right. broken arm or broken leg versus Obi-Wan could die, <laughs> you know, or <laughs> no, it's like, yeah, yeah. what? I mean, no. But I mean, like the idea that you could die is like there's just so much more on the line. And right. if, it, if it bombs, that's going to suck. That's going to really suck if, if it right. does. So yeah. I hope and that's. The, and, the, and, the, and the big thing is what are, what are we what do we stand to gain from it? Like, is it just going to be fan service? You know, like, yeah, is it just going to be fan service? Like, wh- like. What is there? What is there inside of that? That we, like so we know he doesn't do stuff with the Rebel Alliance, right? Because they're just building up and they try to go get it, you know, and all this stuff. And so it's like, well, it seems less likely he's gonna do that. So, what is he doing? Yeah, yeah. You look, know, look, if 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 you're Disney, if you're Lucasfilm, right? I, I think if you have this actor and and you're able to tell this story, and you're like, look, there's no what is what look, we we can tell it. And while we tell this and we we give this to to the fandom, um. We can make some money off of it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be uh, cool. It could be emotional. It could be uh, really great. And then also, then it buys them time, which is like what I was getting. The whole vibe from Bob Iger is that we need to do almost a full stop, and we need to reconfigure what we're doing here because right. we're not making any sense. And the fans can tell it, and people can tell that we're a little off. Um, we're not as connected or as cohesive as maybe we should be. And, and why is that? And also, maybe I'm totally just, I have no flip. I don't work for a Lucasfilm. Maybe they do. Like, that's why I, I keep hoping. I'm, I'm, I'm always optimistic that this High Republic series, there's something that's going to tie from that and then from Thrawn to here to there to get us past yeah. episode nine and drive us forward. I keep hoping that is the case. But now, on that line of, of thought, right, when you think about, okay, something new, the High Republic, Thrawn's backstory, possibly Thrawn and Ezra Bridger in the Unknown Region, the Mandalorian, all of that can drive us forward with a, a story of like Ray and Ben's children or Ben or a Skywalker line or, a, a, you know, Ray's students in the Academy. All those things, there could be something there that could help add context to, to that and make it make it cooler. The Obi-Wan stuff, no. I don't think there's anything inside right. of Obi-Wan's story that is going to... Tell us more about the wider galaxy or mysteries in the galaxy or 
or or whatever. There, I mean, maybe maybe he does go to some Jedi mm-hmm. temple, or we find out there's an actual see, temple, know, an ancient ancient temple on Tatooine. Could you freaking imagine? S- like what? See, <laughs> it, if it's if he leaves Tatooine though at all, then to me, a little bit it diminishes Obi Wan, right? Because yeah. Because it's like I love the idea of Obi Wan literally sacrificing years of his life, being like, "I have to stand here. I have to stand guard and protect him." Dude, I have. You, you, yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it's it's kind of like when I sometimes I think about Darth Maul, and I think, yeah, you know, it took some time, but they did all this cool stuff with Maul, and he fights Ahsoka, and that's cool, and then he fights. Kanan and Ezra and then Obi-Wan kills him again Mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong it's cool and Maul's a great villain for Clone Wars and Rebels but in the back of my mind I still have this thought of like yeah but they should have just left him dead yeah because does it does does Maul's does Maul's does it diminish oh I think to me it diminishes Obi-Wan beating him a little bit and like when he because the whole to me it's like it's is it is it it's a more powerful moment of Obi Wan defeating Maul like yeah. right after he defeats Qui Gon. Well, no, Maul's still alive. It's kind of the same thing with bringing Palpatine back, right? It's like, yeah, I know, I know, it does, I know. It, it's cool. Like the way yeah. they did it, I thought was, I thought you know, I just want him to explain it just a little bit more, or whatever. Right. Um, that that's you know whatever. But then you know like it's cool. Ray fights him and all this stuff, but. Wasn't it just wasn't it just cooler when when Darth Vader in his final moment picks him up, you know, with Luke sitting there and decides to make the decision? Yes, yes. isn't it was and so it's like I sometimes know. sometimes we le- less is more, man. We don't need. I know. You know, I know. We don't. We don't. Need I know. More. And and to be honest with you, I really think they only used the Palpatine move in Episode Nine to save the sequels because they they yeah. were in such a bind and in such a pickle right a- a- and to to guard against what you just said they did give palpatine that one line where he says i have died before oh i, I know was, which yeah, is cool i, I know yeah but i know i 100 yeah, percent hear you though because i i i like you and, and it was something that uh star wars theory and others were all talking about they they really felt like that you're matter of fact they don't they, they just like to think palpatine died he died there and right. that's that's what happened and that this is Maybe even just some other, you know, figure or whatever. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. It yeah. works. It does work in this this frame of nine films and Palpatine's the still this ultimate villain right. that his grandchildren have to, you know, that Anakin's grandchildren and even Palpatine's end up like fall. You know, that's that's kind of star crossed lovers situation. It right. that's interesting. Yeah. Um, fascinating. But, uh, yeah, but yeah. It's just where it's just where I'm at on the Obi Wan series when I when I when I kind of think about it and it, and I I just use Maul and Palpatine as a reference because you know it's like when I watch Episode One and I watch Obi Wan beat Maul and I'm like but yeah he's still alive right and then so- you know and then when I or he comes back and then when I watch Return of the Jedi I see Darth Vader throw him off and it's like yeah but he still comes back yeah I mean. Yeah. And it, it, <sighs> yeah. The only thing that really makes those and they had to be very careful with both those decisions. You know, George, I think George Lucas, the reason he brings Maul back is because he's trying to say, I'm the creator and I can do this. And he was teaching yeah. the people around him to say, I'm bo- just, uh, like, 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 I, let's make a bold decision. Let's show people that um, I think it'd be cool. Let's do it. And like he was the whole thing. When I hear Dave Filoni and George talk about that decision, it's just to show have no fear. Just go boldly yeah. and do this thing, and and don't be afraid of don't be afraid. Just just go with it, you know. Uh, yeah. Almost a go with your gut situation. Looking back on it, though, I mean, you're, it's it's okay to say like, you know what? Maybe that wasn't like the best the best thing. Go watch George's Lucas uh, George Lucas's reaction to watching the first thing the the episode one. <laughs> just overwhelmed by everything that's happening in over one. The, you know, sometimes there's things yeah. you want you want to work on and perfect in the same. Well, I mean, and episodes they, and four, they turn, five, and six. And they turn Maul. They turn Maul into a uh, look. They 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 take this guy who is, you know, only. I mean, at that point, only in episode one, and he, you know, he's so mysterious. And what's his backstory? And they turn him into an amazing character. I mean, Maul mm-hmm. becomes an amazing, amazing character. But it is just this idea of like, well, yeah, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. You know, the the uh, the other thing though, uh, what I was driving to is is. If it wouldn't have been the uh, a Skywalker in a solo that kills Palpatine, you know, or actually a, a Skywalker, well, you know, um, and that's kind of weird too, right? In in that, I mean, it's not yeah. even really then 
it's his own granddaughter who who kills him and, and whatever but right that it, it makes it feel a little bit better and they still acknowledge the death now with with Darth Maul could you imagine if they would have had someone else besides Obi-Wan kill Darth Maul eventually kill him that I oh, think that yeah. would have that, that would have driven people nuts I think they knew ultimately you have to come back to Obi-Wan and you have to have this this uh duel again and and have this you know and I don't know. They were trying to mimic that whole. Some, it was a samurai. And the way film. they the way they do it is sweet because um, he try he tries yeah. to. If you actually people broke it down and they say he tries to use the same move on Obi Wan yeah. that he did on Qui Gon where he like hits him up. You know, right? It's, yeah, right. And and, and Obi Wan just. I mean, Obi Wan Obi Wan literally just one shots him. I mean, yeah, it's, like, it's great. <laughs> it's great. It's it's cool. So that does redeem it a little bit. But I know what you're saying. Do, do those things like when you sometimes you can do too much and it can almost diminish it. And so it's like. Right. That's why I'm glad the Skywalker saga is over, even though I've just said multiple times that I would love to see Ray continue on with that story and see right. what happens. Just don't call it episode 10. Or if you do, if you're going to call it episode 10, then bring in, do the whole nine yards, bring in Mara Jade, tell us about a secret Skywalker child. They go get their cousin, you know, Ben Solo's cousin, who's a Skywalker. Ray has to, you know, whatever, do the whole nine right. yards. I mean, go crazy. Can yeah, I be honest yeah. with you? That's what I want. That that is what I want. I want in the Mandalorian season two, three, or four, or five. I want to see that Luke had a vision and to save his family, he sent them away. Um, he didn't know when it would take place or what he would have to do, but he gave up everything and he gave up the the his one true love and he sent her away. The si same type of sim a similar sacrifice to what Obi Wan Let's, is is going yeah. through. Do that yeah. for me, please. Do what that it, for me. Yeah. Let look. Yeah. Let just God. do that. Let's just do that, and then episode ten is Luke's children that we didn't know existed have to take down Ray, who's turned to the dark side. Oh my God! Oh, people are <laughs> people are literally turning. They're just shutting it off now. They're like, oh, there this is we nuts. go. I don't know. I think we have way more Luke Skywalker hardcore fans than we have sequel fans on this podcast. Yeah, we probably we we probably do. God, but I don't know, man. Um, Cool. That's it's, it's yeah. So we got some stuff to look forward to next week. There's some some cool things coming out. Hopefully we get more announcements. Um, if you guys are excited about Thrawn, uh, I, I I would highly encourage you to pick that book up. Let's talk about it. Send me a transmission. What do you think about it? That's gonna be coming up again September first. Uh, if you can get your hands on that, we we can discuss. And um, you know if you guys got thoughts and theories about. I mean any of this is anyone else? I, I kind of want to know is anyone else interested in you know a Ben Solo ray continuation sign or the, the, sign the story up. beyond yeah the story beyond sign episode nine yeah poe so. i'm down give me some poe give me some poe bba adventures i uh, sign me up man. chewy I, you know there's yeah. tons of places there's tons of places you can go right 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 so okay all right as well is that it for us today i believe it that's is that's it man yep. so we want to thank you for hanging out in hyperspace our next episode will probably be discussing um if stuff gets leaked or stuff i shouldn't say leaked released uh next week for when star wars celebration was going to be i do believe we are on the uh, precipice here of some star wars news coming out but continue guys to send us in your transmissions thoughts or origin stories or any of your favorite memories from a galaxy far far away yeah, if those theory, if something does come out in celebration, or if you guys see like a um, the trailer or whatever, send us a transmission about that. We'd love to hear your thoughts and, and kind of react to that here on the podcast. So with that, yeah, don't forget to like our podcast, um, subscribe, write a review, leave a comment, or send that transmission to hyperspacehangout at gmail .com. We will see you guys next time, and remember that traveling through hyperspace ain't like dusting crops. Yeah.